the day of the tree so he cried out to the lord and the lord showed him a tree when he cast it into the waters the waters were made sweet the tree had a purpose to fulfill on a particular day the tree was positioned to solve a particular problem on a given day you and when that day came the tree suddenly became significant and became important you know there's always a day in which you become significant there's always a day in which all that god has done in your life becomes useful there's always a day in which all that has happened in your life will become significant there's a point when your life become relevant your issues become relevant to your generation Father, we thank you this morning for this opportunity you have given us to come and listen to your word. We pray, with God, that you help us open the eyes of our understanding. Let your word fall on our hearts as a seed. Let it grow and bear fruit that will bring glory to your name. We thank you. We bless you. In Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. We thank God for today. And you are all welcome to today's service. Uh, today is 8th, 8th April 2018. 8th April. And I hope to bring to a conclusion the series on destiny today. So today, I hope today will be the last um, teaching on destiny. Because we've been looking at destiny for a couple of uh, weeks and I think months now. We've been looking at the issue of destiny and um, trying to, by the help of God, understand our place in, in, in God's affairs and how God... Um, for saw us in eternity and how God um, brought us into time to fulfill purpose and we're looking at those issues we've also talked about the will of God and how we can be placed in the perfect will of God then we, we've also talked about the book of our destiny um, and what we, 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 ha- we have to do, you know, what God has said concerning us and what we also have to do uh, so that what God has written about us will be fulfilled. And uh, we looked also at how to accurately discern the will of God for our lives, how to hear the voice of God and then things that we will encounter on our path of destiny. Then we also talked about how to live above limitations of our natural family destinies in fulfillment of God's destiny for our lives. And today, I just want to sum it all up in what I call the day of the tree. You know, the day of the tree. And I'm, I'm going to talk about the tree of your life, the tree of my life, and uh, the, the purposes of God concerning our lives. The reason why I call it the day of the tree is because of where I chose the the subject from. In Exodus 15, verse 23 to 25. Uh, Exodus 15, 23 to 25. This was when the people of Israel got to a place where... uh, Let me read from verse 22. Now Moses brought Israel from the Red Sea. Then they went out into the wilderness of Shah. And they went three days in the wilderness and found no water. Now when they came to Mara, they could not drink the waters of Mara, for they were bitter. Therefore the name of it was called Mara. And the people complained against Moses, saying, What shall we drink? 
So he cried out to the Lord, and the Lord showed him a tree. When he cast it into the waters, the waters were made sweet. And so the, 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 what I want to say is that the tree had a purpose to fulfill, you know, on a particular day. Um, the tree was positioned to solve a particular problem on a given day. And when that day came, the tree suddenly became significant and became important. Now, we, we are not told how that tree grew up there, how it found its way, you know, to the place. But God knew, and God had prepared the tree for some time. The day the seed dropped, God knew that this tree, I'm going to use this tree to solve the problem of bitter waters. So when they got to the place and they were complaining, then God told Moses, you know, all this while I've been preparing this tree to solve this problem. And so go and cut this tree and put this tree in the water and the water will become sweet. And lo and behold, when he cut the tree and put the tree in the water, the water became sweet and they could drink it. So before they came, before they got to the place, the tree was there all along, but it was not needed. It didn't have any use, you know, not very significant. But there was one particular day that the tree became very, very significant. And that's what happens to us in our, in our destiny, on our path of destiny. You know, there's always a day in which you become significant. There's always a day in which all that God has done in your life becomes useful. There's always a day in which all that has happened in your life will become significant. And indeed, the Bible uh, talks a lot about trees. And the Bible always compares the life of the believer to trees. So our lives are compared to trees throughout the Bible. And the Bible also, you know, the, 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 the subject of trees is very interesting, you know, in the Bible. Uh, for instance, you, you, you see that in Genesis chapter 2, verse 9, God allowed all manner of trees to grow, you know, three categories or three kinds of trees to grow in the Garden of Eden. The tree of life, the tree of knowledge of good and evil, and all other trees. Then also you see on Mount Calvary, you, you find three, three trees on Mount Calvary. You find the tree that Jesus hung on and the other two trees that the two people, the one one criminal and one born again, you know, they were not two criminals. One criminal and one saint hung on the cross, died with Jesus. And that one was also th th three trees. So it's significant. And I'm going to take you like on a journey to get to understand this. For instance, when we look at Psalm 1 verse 1, the Bible compares us to a tree. Psalm 1 verse 1, you know, from verse 3 going. It starts by saying, Blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stands in the way of sinners, nor sits on the seat of mockers. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law that he meditate day and night. Then the verse 3 says what? He shall be like what? He shall be like what? A tree planted. He shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that brings forth its fruit in its season, whose leaf also shall not wither, and whatever he does shall prosper. So God created trees to remind us of ourselves. When we see trees, we remember us, remember ourselves. You know, how our life, that's why we have time to call your, the, your life tree or the tree of your life or your family tree where they can trace uh, generations of families. Okay, so then also in Isaiah 61, um, verse 3, God also compared the righteous or the saints to trees. Isaiah 61, verse 3. He was talking about what the Messiah will come to do. To console those who mourn in Zion, to give them beauty for ashes, the oil of joy for mourning, the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness, that they may be called trees of righteousness, 
the planting of the Lord, that he may be glorified. That they may be called trees of righteousness. The planting. And this one he was referring to the saints. Referring to the people of God. That they may be called trees. So all of us are trees. You know, we are all trees. The Bible compares us to trees. Let's just accept it and be free. Amen. Accept that you are a tree and be free. <laughs> okay, Psalm 92. Psalm 92. And I'm going to prove to you that all men are trees. <laughs> and women also. Psalm 92, verse 12. The righteous shall flourish like a palm tree. You see? The righteous shall flourish like a palm tree. Like, like, you know, a palm tree. Like, so he is comparing the righteous to a palm tree. Palm tree, you know. Um, it shall grow like a cedar in Lebanon. So then I'll, I'll come back to this, this, this particular scripture. Because it shows us how the righteous grows. He grows like the cedar. But he flourishes like a palm tree. You know, it shall grow like a, a cedar. A cedar uh, is, is a tree, you know, that grows usually in Lebanon. And throughout the Bible, uh, we have references to cedar of Lebanon. You know, and most of the references have got to do with its roots, how it lengthens its roots, how it is stable and solid. So God compares our lives to trees, and God wants the righteous to flourish like a palm tree. You know how a palm tree is? A palm tree can do many things at the same time, many, many things. I'll, I'll come to that. But let me give you one scripture, one more scripture, Mark 8, 24. Mark 8, 24. When Jesus prayed for a blind man, and uh, he opened his spiritual eyes first before he opened his physical eyes. Sometimes we say that, oh, Jesus prayed for one person. The person didn't see. And so he prayed for him again. No, uh, he opened his spiritual eyes to see. So Mark chapter 8, verse 22. Then he came to Bethsaida, and the brought a blind man to him and begged him to touch him. So he took the blind man by the hand and led him out of town. And when he, has, when he had spit on his eyes, he put his hands on him. He asked him if he saw anything. Then he looked up and said, I see men like trees walking. <laughs> then he put his hands on his eyes again and made him look up. And he was restored and saw everyone clearly. And you know, the, the first one was God, Jesus fixed his spiritual eyes. Because the Bible actually compares men, I mean human beings, to trees. So he was seeing right. He said, I see men as trees. But if he, Jesus had left him at that point, he would have just have been spiritual, you know, <laughs> just seeing spiritual things. Because the Bible compares us to trees. Okay, so, which means that you know, the destiny of every believer is to end up as a solution. That's our destiny. Whether we like it or not, we are solutions. God created the believer as a solution. That's why we are called the, the salt of the earth. We are called the light of the world. The salt of the earth. The light of the world. Why? Because salt preserves. Salt adds or gives flavor. You see? So, when the believers are on the earth, the earth will be preserved. When we are on the earth, peace will prevail. When the church is on the earth, light will prevail. Light is on earth. When, when the church is raptured, the world will enter into total darkness where the order of the day will be lawlessness. Total lawlessness because the church is not in the world anymore. So we are we are we are we are we are we are solution. We provide solution. Um, and we are we are we are compared to trees. So the season where you become useful to your generation is the day. That is your day when you become relevant to your generation. So when God calls you, God puts a seed in you. Now that seed will grow. When the seed grows and you become useful. You see, you don't go back to God with the seed. The seed must grow and bear fruit. 
When the seed grows and you become useful, you become useful to your generation, you become useful to God. When you become useful to your generation, when you are bearing fruit, there are some trees that bear fruit for people to eat. And so they become useful when they start bearing fruit and people start eating of of the fruit. There are some trees, they only provide shade. So they become useful when they start providing shade and people take shelter under their shade. There are other trees, they use their leaves for medicine. So they become useful when their leaves are used as healing or medicine. You know, Bible says that the, the tree of life in, in, in the paradise of God, it said there was a tree of life in the middle of the street, you know, and then on either side of the river of life, there was a tree of life, and they bought 12 manner of fruits, each one for one, uh, each month, and the leaves of the tree was for the healing of the nations. You see that God is talking about trees, 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 because we are, we are like trees. We are like trees. So, before a certain time or a certain day, your life doesn't make sense. All the things that your life is, you know, all the, uh, the stories your life is, uh, is telling, they don't make sense. But at a point, there's always a point when your life will begin to make sense. There's a point when your life will become relevant. Your issues become relevant to your generation. Relevant to some people, relevant to a particular kind of people, relevant to when I say generation, I'm not really talking about generation in terms of chronology. I'm talking about generation in terms of people that God has prepared for you to impact, for you, for your life to make an impact on them. They they are your generation. God, everybody has a generation. You know, the, the, the angel told uh, Zechariah, he said that John the Baptist is coming to prepare, make ready a people already prepared in the spirit. So there are people that God has designed your life to bless. But not until a certain day, your life will not be a blessing to those people. In fact, those people will not even show up at certain times of your life. They will show up when your life can make meaning to them. And so the tree was there all along. You know, people passed by the tree. They didn't take notice of it. And every tree, when you go to the forest, every tree has a story to tell. Yes, every tree. So if you, if you have ears and you put your ear to the tree, you will hear stories. You will hear this tree telling you that I nearly died, you know, because they, they were cutting my back, you know, for herbal medicine all the time. They were cutting me, they were cutting me. And this one would say, oh, you know, I nearly died. You know, there was a heavy downpour and I, I was, you know, tilted to this side. You know, so I nearly died. Every tree has a story, you know, but the, the, the beautiful thing is that in that season where the tree becomes relevant, the story also becomes relevant to the generation. The pain becomes a blessing to generation. Then, you see, that's why as a believer, you know, God, God, God uses our lives. He takes our lives and he uses our lives. The good, the bad, and the ugly. So the Bible says that all things will work together for good to those who love God and to those who are the called according to purpose. If you are the called, if you are part of those who have been called according to purpose, those that he foreknew and he predestined, you know, and then he called. He said that all things, everything about your life at the point will make sense. At the point, will feed into people's lives. At the point, will be a blessing to people. There's a point where your pain becomes somebody's gain. Yes, that that's that's the point I'm talking about. That that's the that's the place of fulfillment of destiny. That's the place where that's the what the day I'm talking about. The day of the tree, when all the issues of your life. 
right from the beginning to the end, all of them will be summed up and become a blessing. That is why, bless it, how are you? That is why when you are going through something, you know, sometimes when you go through things momentarily, you, you feel like your life is meaningless. You feel like you've come to the end of your life. Your life is not making impact anymore. You know, but when you enter your day, everything, see, God will put all the pieces together. There are some lives, they are like, they are, they are, they are scattered. They are like pieces of paper that have been torn, you know, scattered and all that. But when the day comes, God brings all the issues, all the pieces. The reason why God sometimes, you know, allows situations, the believer to go through situations, it's not, it's not for you, it's for other people. Sometimes you go through issues in your life, not for your sake, but for other people. Because a time will come where all the things that you've been through, in fact, all the things that came and uh, 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 as if it was, they were coming to kill you, they are going to be a blessing to people. If you don't believe, look at this tree that was there all along. Why is it that only this day, you know, as soon as Moses got there, they were desperate. If the tree has not done anything in life, at this moment, his, his life has become very significant. To the extent that people's, people's survival depended on him. And everybody will have his day. Will have his day. Now, God is glorified when we come to a point of fruitfulness, finishing. When I say fruitfulness, I'm not really talking about, you know, it's because uh, every tree, every tree has what it was planted to do. If the tree is to give shade, you will not find fruit that will, uh, you, you can eat, but it will provide shade. People will come and lodge under a shade. You see, so there are some people that, and, and, and the particular kind of tree, you know, the seed that was planted determines what, what tree will, will come up. So there are some people, their lives, their destiny is to provide shade. So they, they are shade-giving trees. If you go looking for fruit to eat, you'll be disappointed. But they can provide shade. Maybe they, 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 they don't have what it takes to provide fruit to eat. But you can be comfortable under their shade. That's, 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 that's how God made them. And so fruitfulness means finishing. Coming to a place of maturity where the seed that was planted is now fulfilling the purpose for which it was planted. In 1 John 1.23, the Bible talks about seed. That we have been born again, not of corruptible seed, but of incorruptible seed. Even by the word of God, which lives and abides forever. Now, then in John 15 verse 8, he talks about fruit. That the Father is glorified by our fruit. Our fruit, so from seed to fruit, is finishing, is, is starting and then finishing. He starts with a seed and then the fruit is a final product or the end product or the results of the journey. So the journey is from seed to fruit. At the end, God should get the result for which, for which he sent the seed. He said, my word will not return to me void, but it will accomplish the purpose for which I sent it and prosper in the thing wherein I sent it to do. The word is a seed. So God releases the seed and God puts the seed, the seed through process for it to come to a place where it will accomplish, accomplish divine purpose and divine assignment, divine destiny. At that point, that's the point that God gets, God gets glory. It's the point of finishing. In John 17, 4, Jesus Christ said, I have glorified you on the earth. Why? I have finished the work that you gave me. I have glorified you on the earth because I have finished the work. Now, I am living, I'm living in the day. I'm, I, my, my, my life is making impact. It's becoming people's blessing. It's making impact in their life. That's what you're saying. 
I'm finished. You see, the seed, the seed doesn't make any impact. It's the fruit, the end results. That's what matters. So God has his mind on the end. On the end. God is not, he's not worried about the process. He is concerned about the process, but he's not worried. Because there are times when the seed looks like it's dead. In fact, there are times when the, the tree, the tree looks like it's never going to be useful. There are times when if you look at a tree, you feel like cutting it away, cutting it down. But God always sees the end from the beginning. He said that's why he doesn't give up on us because he sees the end. That's why sometimes we even miss the way or sometimes we, we, we don't go straight. We don't go according to, according to the pattern that he has charted or the path he has charted. But he always keeps his eyes on the end. That at the end, this life is going to be a blessing. It's going to benefit other people. At the end, it's always at the end. At the end, the glory is always at the end, at the finishing point. That's when he gets glory. So he said, the, the seed that he sends, the word, and the seed is a word from uh, Luke 8, verse 11. He says, that The word is the seed, is the word. You see, so the seed. The word that he puts in you, that word that he gives you, at a point, it's, it will start making sense. It will start living its full life. It will start making the desired impact. Hallelujah. So, God is glorified when we come to the place or the point of finishing. But we must know, we must know how we move from seed to fruit. And what the process looks like. Because sometimes, sometimes you may be anxious. And you may think that your life has not made any meaning. No, it's because you have not got into a place of finishing. Because in the place of finishing, you see, in the, Joseph, when he got to the place of finishing, you know what he said? He said, you don't, don't think that it was you who sent me to Egypt. He said, don't think you sent me. He said, God sent me to Egypt. That was the point where he had come to the fulfillment of destiny. Now, all the pieces of his life were making sense because God put all the pieces together and they, they made a, a meaningful picture. Before then, his life didn't make sense. Because if you take just the pit part of his life, it doesn't make sense. Just a dry pit. You know, dry pits with scorpions and all these reptiles. It doesn't. It doesn't make a complete story. Just um, a slave in Potiphar's house doesn't make sense. Just a, a a slave in a prison house doesn't make a complete story. Doesn't make sense. But when Joseph got to the palace and when he looked behind him, you know, when he stepped into the place of destiny and when he looked behind him, he was able to count all the things, the bad things that he had endured. He was able to count them among his blessing. So Joseph would thank God that his brothers sold him. If they had not sold me, there's no way I would have gotten this through. So, thank God my brother sold me. But when they were selling him, Bible say, uh, Reuben said, we saw the lad and the anguish of his soul when he was crying for help, pleading with us. But we sold him. You see? But when he got to the palace, he would thank God for they selling him. In fact, he's going to thank God for Potiphar's wife, you know, accusing him falsely and landing him in prison. But all these things will happen when he gets to the finishing point. When all the issues begin to make sense, then he will understand God. Then he will see the wisdom of God. Then you have no enemies. You have no bad situations, no bad stories, no messes. He will, he will see that all the things, the good, the bad, the ugly, everything, including the, the devil's blows and all that he took, they have all made sense. And when he sat on the throne, he thanked God for the low moments and for the high moments. For the times when he interpreted dreams 
and people applauded to the times when he tried to explain that I did not try to rape her and people didn't understand. And I believe Joseph tried to explain. It's not true, but nobody will listen to him. You know, and if, if you take only that aspect of his life, it doesn't make sense. It, it, it's, it's so painful. Very painful. But if you wait and you get to the end of his life, then you will see the connection. You see how God weaving something. You know, I told somebody, I said, your life looks tattered like torn pieces. But I see that God is taking a needle and he's weaving them together to make something beautiful that has never existed before. Do you know what God used to, to, to make, to, to create the new creation? The new creation came out of death. The new creation came out of death. Somebody died and then God used the person's death to bring out the new creation. Life out of death. It's a mystery. So, but how do we grow? Come to Psalm 92. Psalm 92, we are going to 92 again. It says, the righteous shall flourish like the palm tree, but and he shall grow like the cedar. So, when God gives you the seed, the seed must grow. When the seed grows, then you will flourish. You see, when the seed grows, you are like the palm tree. You will flourish like the palm tree. The righteous shall flourish like a palm tree. You know, look at a palm tree. A palm tree is very useful. What are some of the things that you can use a palm tree for? I mean, the first thing that comes to your mind, you know, it will determine where, I mean, where you, you, your mind is, you know. <laughs> <laughs> because when you when you go to base, you know, you know base, <laughs> base, they thank God for palm tree. <laughs> they thank God for palm tree. <laughs> yes, when, when you go to base, base. But you see the, 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 the palm tree, you get you get a palm fruit. And look at what we use the palm fruit for. You can use the word soup, oil. Soap, fuel, just the palm fruit, just the fruit. You see, then, then, then come to the branches. Broom. You know you can use the, the branches for broom. In fact, that's what they use for brooms. Brooms. Then many other things. Then come to um, uh, the, the other side. <laughs> when, when you fell it, when you fell it, what do you use it for? What? Crossover. <laughs> so even, even in this falling state, the palm tree is useful. Useful. Because you, you get palm wine. You get wine from the palm tree. And when it's even dying, you get mushrooms. Yes. And even meat. Meat. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so when he says the righteous shall flourish like the palm tree, it means that you will be useful. Useful in all things. God will take everything about you and it will do something. You see, he, listen, there, there are some people eh, you can minister to them very well. I mean, you can minister to them and and, and your life will bless them so much only because of the things that your life is made up of. Not that you're going to share your story, but as you speak, deep call it unto deep. So sometimes when the believer goes through brokenness, goes through a lot of stuff, God uses all those things to prepare and to mold you to mold you to be a special blessing to some specific people. Because there are some people you will meet, them, you, just, just meeting them and just talking to them, they are healed. They are healed. Because of what 
the kind of configuration that has been done in your system by reason of the things that you pass through. As I say, every tree has a story to tell. Every tree. And God wants an, our impact to be generational and lasting. Generational and lasting impact. He said the one who is planted by rivers of water, he said that he will, he will bear fruit in due season. His leaves will not wither. His leaves will not wither, which means durability. So fruitfulness and durability. He's durable. He will endure. He will last. He will make lasting impact. Not just making just an impact and then fizzling out. No, you make lasting impact. That's God's plan for the believer. The righteous shall flourish like the palm tree. But he says, he shall grow like the cedar. So, if you want to flourish like a palm tree, you must grow like, like a cedar in Lebanon. Grow like a cedar in Lebanon. So, God wants our impact to be generational and lasting. God wants our impact. He wants our impact to outlive us. If it can happen that way, then our growth must be like the cedar. The cedar grows downwards before it grows upwards. Come to Hosea 14, verse 5. Hosea 14, verse 5. That's why the seed that God gives us, we must allow the seed to grow. We must allow the seed to grow, you know, downwards. When you are growing downwards, we don't see your fruit. We don't see anything. But in the day, in your day, the depths that you've gone will be seen in your day. You see, it says, talking about Israel, he said, I will be like the dew to Israel. He shall grow like the lily and lengthen his roots like Lebanon. Now, Lebanon here is the cedar of Lebanon. So, he will lengthen his roots like the cedar. He will grow like the lily. See, the lily is a plant. The cedar is a tree. So, he's saying that Israel will grow like the... He will lengthen his roots like the cedar. So, the growth, downward growth is deeper than the outward good or the upward good. There are many believers who are very tall on the outside but no roots. That's not God's plan. God's plan is for you to be the lily. In other words, when you compare the lily to the cedar, the lily looks very, very little. Very little unassuming, but the cedar is strong. So, God wants our roots, our roots to be lengthened. The, 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 the unseen part of our lives should be richer and should be stronger than the seen part. Are you getting me? Are you getting me? Yes. When your roots lengthen, your branch will spread your fragrance will be, will, be, will, be, will, be, will be seen. Your beauty will come up. If I want you to read from verse, the, from the verse 5 to the verse 7, it's all there. But my interest is that God wants us to grow like the cedar. When you get the seed, go down. Because the seed must even rot. Get to a point of death before it starts growing. That is the reason for many of the things that we go through, it will take us our whole lifetime to understand that. That the seed itself has certain things it attracts. It depends on the seed you carry. The seed you carry determines the tree that you will grow into. And God is a wise God. God knows the seed that he has placed in you. He said, I want you to flourish like a palm tree. So that you, when you get into your day, everything about your life is helping other people. Everything. 
your dark moments will become people's light. Your sour moments will become people's sweetness. Your, 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 your troubled waters will become people's still waters. That is how our lives look before God. When you get to that place where you are fulfilling destiny, that's how your light becomes. Your pain becomes somebody's gain. Your precious becomes somebody's pleasure. <laughs> so then, so then, so then the things you've been through, they become somebody's gain, somebody's treasure. Your trials will become somebody's triumph. Your test is somebody's testimony. And your mess will become a message to somebody. Yes. That is, that, is, that is destiny. But look at the process. The whole thing begins with a seed. When God gives you the seed. When God's, God gives you the seed. The seed. God's, the process starts with the seed. The seed. God giving you the seed. God giving you the word. God giving you the promise. Giving you the prophetic word about destiny, showing you that I've, I, I, my plan is for you to flourish like the palm tree, that I want you to make lasting impact. I want your life to come for something. I want your life to be recorded in the, in the, in the chronicles of heaven, that somebody lived on this earth and lived to make impact. Why? Because your life became a blessing to people. Look at all the people that... Uh, appeared in the hall of faith. Their lives were blessings to people. Bible said uh, Potiphar was blessed because of Joseph. Just by being around, the guy, the man was blessed. He was blessed. It's a mystery how authority is birthed through struggles. It's a mystery. How, you see, where, where did we get power for healing? His tribes. We got it from his tribes. It's all, the way God thinks, it's not the way we think. Power for healing, authority to heal, comes from stripes. It's a mystery. Life comes out of death. So when you are going through God's process, you are going to experience things like death. Things that look like darkness. That look like stripes in your life. Because of the end or the finishing, the end product, which will minister to other people and be a blessing to them. So, we must protect the seed. There are enemies of the seed. Let me show you, you know, we, we've read the story of the, the sower, the parable of the sower, that the sower went out to sow, and some of the seed fell on, um, um, you know, by the wayside, uh, in Luke 8, 4 to 8, and Mark 4, 3 to 9, and Matthew 13, 3 to 9. Uh, these are references. They all talk about the parable of the sower and the, the explanation Jesus gave in the parable. Now, there are some of the seeds that never went through the process from planting of, of the seed to bearing of fruit. Some, you know, didn't didn't go, they didn't get to a place of maturity or a place where they became useful. And, and Jesus gave us the reasons. The reasons why some people never fulfill destiny. They have the seed all right. They carry the seed, you know, but they never get to a place of fulfillment of destiny. And so they, are, they don't become a blessing to people. They don't grow to become trees that will offer shade, that will offer food, that will offer medicine to people. They, they, they fall alongside, die alongside, you know, 
their, their potential is wasted alongside. Never, ne- never fulfill, never leave their full potential to be a blessing, to flourish like a palm tree, so that every part of this is, is, is doing something. And he gave reasons for that. The first reason he gave was that, you see, the one that fell by the wayside, that if you study the parable, you will see the three other, the two other conditions, the two other uh, conditions of uh, a negative soil, you can trace it to the first one. The first one was just thrown by the wayside. It never got planted. You see, if, 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 if the seed is not planted, it will not grow. It didn't, it didn't get planted. Then the birds of the air came and devoured it. Why? Because it, it fell by the wayside. It fell by the wayside. You see, God does not give the seed in a vacuum. God does not give vision in a vacuum. God does not give promises in a vacuum. God does not give prophecies in a vacuum. God gives his seed in a context. He plants his seed in an environment. So if the seed is not planted, it will not grow. He said, the righteous shall flourish like the palm tree. They shall grow like the cedar. And then he said, those who are planted, those who are planted in the courts of of the Lord shall grow. Hello? He said, those who are planted, if you are not planted, you, you will not fulfill your potential. You will not fulfill destiny. There are many people carrying raw seed. Just carrying raw, giving raw, because, but, but raw, see, raw seed, raw seed cannot outlive you. Raw seed. But, uh, orange seed. So you are giving orange seed to people. No. The seed must be planted. Because you can count the number of seeds in an orange fruit, but you cannot count the number of oranges in a seed. When you plant the seed and it grows, it bears different, different, I mean, many, many fruits, which also contain seeds. That's God's idea. So, with that one seed that God gave you, it will become a forest. When we trace your impact, it is like a forest. Because the seed took time to be planted. And it grew. It grew, became a tree, and it bore fruit. Then when it bore fruit, people ate the fruit, they were blessed. And the seeds of the fruit were also planted, grew, bore fruit. So when God is tracing your impact, your impact will outlive you. When we say impact, don't be thinking, you see, impact is in the sight of God. It's the sight of God. And so, your life becoming a blessing to people, that seed that God has given you must be planted. You must be planted. You must be planted. There are many people who think they are gifted. And they are just walking about. They are gifted. Don't have any place of planting. You will not last. you your gifting will not last. You see, God, the, the gifting or the seed that God gave you, it needs to be planted in a place. You must, you must belong to an environment. It will take, you see, it will take some people, they, they will learn these things in the hard way. <laughs> some people will get bruises before they learn. That there is always a place. He said, the righteous shall flourish like palm tree. He shall grow like cedar in Lebanon. Those who are planted. Those who are planted. Those who, who have sat down. You know, it, it, it's, it's, a, it's a state, it's a state of, of your mind. You know, you have, you have sat down. There's a reason why Jesus Christ told them. He said, sit down. Say, tell them to sit down in groups. Before the bread was multiplied, they had to sit down. 
Elijah told the woman, he said, when you have gone, when, when you have uh, gone to the house, call your sons and shut the door. Shut the door. When you shut the door, start pouring the oil. That is when the oil began to multiply. When the door was shut. Why? There was an environment. A closed environment. God had created an environment. So be planted. Where should we be planted? You see, the first one is, be planted by rivers of water. Rivers of water. Rivers. Rivers of water. In Psalm 1. He said, the one who does not walk in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stand in the way of sinners, nor sit in the, on the seat of scoffers, but his delight is in the word. And he gives his whole attention to the word. He said, he shall be like a tree planted. That's how you get planted. By rivers of water. When your roots, you see, when you are developing roots in the word, that's how you get planted. See, there, there are many people who are blown about by many different, all kinds of winds because they are not planted. And so if you are not planted, you will not flourish. Because the righteous shall flourish like the palm tree, he shall grow like the cedar. Those who are planted, planted, and someone showed us how to be planted. How to be planted. He said, he does not work in the counsel of the ungodly. You see, you see, he's talking about words. Words. You see, your, the words, the counsel of the ungodly, the words will form an opinion. It will chart a path. You see, so... He listens to the counsel of the ungodly. Then it, it creates a path. Then he stands in the way of sinners. Then after he has stood in the way of sinners, he becomes comfortable. Then he sits down on the seat of scoffers. He will not flourish. But the one who gives attention to the word, in other words, he listens to the counsel of the word and he walks in the way of the word and he sits on the seat of the word. He said his delight is in the word and he meditates on the word day and night. Day and night means he gives his whole attention to the word. He said he shall be like a tree planted by rivers of water. He will bear fruit in season. You see, when the season comes, he will not fail to bear fruit. Then his leaf too will not wither. Evergreen. If we are not planted, if you are not planted, you see, and, and, and the other thing is, come to Jeremiah uh, 17. Jeremiah 17. Verse 7. Let me give you, let me show you another way to be planted. Jeremiah 17. And it's, it's all one. It's all one. Verse 7. Blessed is the man who trusts in the Lord and whose hope is the Lord. You see, there are two things. Um, trusting in the Lord and making the Lord your trust. There are two different things. It says, the man who trusts in the Lord and the man whose hope is the Lord. Re read it. Put it Put it there. Or you have it. Okay. Blessed is the man who trusts in the Lord and whose hope is the Lord. It, it doesn't say, and who hopes in the Lord. To hope the Lord is to trust in the Lord. He trusts 
in the Lord, and his hope is the Lord. Then he said, He shall be like a tree planted by the waters, which spreads out its roots by the river, and will not fear when heat comes, but its leaf will be green, and will not be anxious in the year of drought, nor will cease from yielding fruit. Those who trust in the Lord and who make the Lord their trust, their hope. Whose hope is the Lord? Say, trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding in all your ways acknowledge Him. When you place your trust in God, the Bible says you will be planted. It all comes back to the word. It all comes back to delight, um, having a delight in the word, being planted in the word, developing roots in the word. There are many believers. Yesterday, I was, I was talking at the school of ministry, and I was telling them that there are many people these days who place trust in men doesn't matter whether they are men of God or men of men than in the word. In fact, people even because we, we don't we don't want to develop our roots in the word and to find out what the word is saying, we take what people are saying. Sometimes we even place prophecy above the word. We place it above the word. Because somebody, somebody was saying that a prophet told him to, 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 to divorce, his, his, to leave his wife. Point blank. So if you don't let her go, she worry you. Married, not, not uh, married. You will not flourish. But if we, we build our roots in the way, so we'll flourish. That's how the seed can reach its full potential. And you'll get to a point where every part of you is a blessing, like the palm tree. Flourish like the palm tree. You have to grow like the cedar. Lengthen your roots like the cedar. Go deep in the word. Decide to live by the word. Decide to make God your hope. Trust in the Lord. Decide to put your trust in God, not in man. That is where you flourish. For as long as your eyes are on man, you don't flourish. And you see, can you, you can't look, you can't use one eye to look up and one to look down. That's why I say trust in the Lord. With all your heart. And when you are trusting in the Lord, it will appear, it will appear as if you are losing it. And it's of God. God won't, because for, for you to develop trust in God, you must come to a point where you see that you, you are not standing on anything. You are not standing on that nothing, nothing that you are standing on. You are only standing on God, standing on His word, standing on His mercy and on His grace. He said, on Christ the only rock I stand. All other ground is sinking sand. That is the point of flourishing when the seed will flourish. Then the verse, he said, 92. He said, those who flourish in the court, in the court of our God, in the court of our God, Those who are planted in the house of the Lord shall flourish in the courts of our God. They shall still bear fruit in old age. They shall be fresh and flourishing. So the third, the third one, be planted in an environment. Be planted in the spiritual family. Be planted. People who are moving from place to place, they don't bear fruit. They don't bear fruit.
They don't bear fruit. When you are jumping from place to place, you will not bear fruit. In fact, you will be confused. Because the seed in you, listen, the seed in you has a destination. The tree that you must become, God must plant you by particular rivers. In particular environments. Because, mind you, he said, the one who listens to the counsel, the counsel, what is the counsel? The counsel is seed, seed. The word is seed. Whatever anybody tells you is a seed. Seeds are being sown into you. So the one who does not work in the counsel of the ungodly, he does not take in the seed of the ungodly. Do you know that words are seeds? Yes, words are seeds. The day that the devil came to Eden, you know what he came to do? He came to sow a seed. A seed in the mind of the woman. And affected the man too. There, there, there are some people who are around you. They are sowing seeds in your mind. Everybody is controlled by the kind of seed you allow into your mind. Simple. When people change, when you see people, see that they have changed, check what they are listening to. Or who they are listening to. People don't just change. Bible says, do not be deceived. Evil communication will corrupt good manners. Don't be deceived. Don't think you are smart. What you keep hearing will change you. Because it's a seed. Faith can't by hearing. Do you know that fear also can't by hearing? Faith can't by hearing and hearing. Fear too can't by hearing and hearing. The reason why some believers they live their lives in fear is because of what they listen to. They they listen to the seed they are allowed to enter their minds. The word is saying this. When you listen to the word, faith is born. The world is saying this. When you listen to the word, fear is born. So there are some believers that they take counsel from movies. They take counsel from movies, from discussions on radio. That's where they pick their ideas. The idea that they used to live their lives, they pick them from radio discussions, secular discussions, and they pick them from stories that they've heard or read about. But if you decide to pick your counsel, from the word, you will flourish. If you decide to pick, because when you pick your counsel from the word, faith is born. It comes by hearing and hearing by the word. And I'm saying that you have to be planted in a spiritual family. Be planted, planted. But when I say planted, I mean develop your roots. Be planted. You, you, will not, you, will, you see, you will not benefit. Yesterday, someone asked a question. And I was telling the person that every house has a unique identity. Not everybody belongs anywhere or everywhere. There's a place you belong to. You must find a place and be, be, be planted, be rooted. It's as simple as that. It's as simple as that. Because the seed that is in you, do you know, as part of your process, God will place you under tutors and governors till the time appointed by the Father. Galatians 4.1 Galatians 4.1 See, there's a reason why when the Son of God became man. God had to appoint a Joseph over him. He was the son of God who was going to save all mankind, including Joseph. 
But at a point in his life, God appointed Joseph over him. Because that's how God works. The seed, the seed must be planted in an environment. And God will place you under governance and tutors until the time that he has appointed for you. If you miss that aspect of your life, you will see that you have gaps, gaps, gaps. You will get to a point where you see that there are gaps, gaps, gaps. There are gaps in your, in your life. And when there are gaps in your life, who fills the gaps? The devil fills the gaps. Now I say that the hair, as long as he's a child, does not differ at all from a slave, though he's master of all. But is under guidance and stewards until the time appointed by the father. So you will be under tutorship until the time the father has appointed. That's how your seed will grow like the cedar. That's how roots are developed. Roots are developed under guidance and tutorship. It's not enough to have a seed. It's not enough. It's not enough. It's not enough to be pregnant. It's not enough. You still go to guy, guy, uh, 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 tutors and governors. There are spiritual midwives that God has appointed who must help you deliver the baby that is in you. In fact, who must help, help, help the baby in you to be fully developed to bring you to a point where the baby is born finally. If you, if you skip that aspect of God's plan for your life, you will see gaps. You will see gaps. You will see things in your life that will always, always be like gaps, 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 gaps. Be planted. So you realize that the, the, the one that fell by the, by, by the roadside was not planted. Now, that led to all the other problems. The second, the second one was the one that was that, that grew up on the rocky soil. One of the blessings of being planted, being under tutors and covenants, is that you don't develop rocks underneath. The second problem was rock beneath. There was rock beneath. So, the, 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 the seed could not grow. You know, the seed could not grow. It just, it just, it just uh, uh, grew a little, then it wilted because there was rock underneath. It's all big, you see, but that, one of the blessings of being planted, developing roots in the Word, trusting in God, and being under tutors and governance is for these issues, these, these rock issues to be dealt with. So a time will come where God would have dealt with all the rock issues in your life. Through many ways. Through teaching. Through reproof. Through correction. Through instruction. Say, for the, the word of God, you say, all scripture is God breath and is profitable for doctrine, for correction, for rebuke, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God will be complete, thoroughly equipped for every good work. That's the work that God does. When you are planted, he said, the word of God, every word that God, God brings, he said, it is profitable for doctrine, 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 doctrine is when you are being conformed to a certain pattern. That's doctrine. If another word for doctrine is discipline, when you are being conformed to a certain pattern, when your thought patterns are being formed by the word, instructions in righteousness, Corrections. That is one of the benefits of process. 
If you are planted, you are put under governors and tutors to feed you, to lead you, to watch over you, and to instruct you. To feed you, to lead you, to watch over you. See, shepherds feed their sheep. Shepherds lead their sheep. They lead their sheep by example and lead their sheep by precept. Shepherds watch over their flock. While shepherds watch over their flock by night. Watch over their flock. And shepherds instruct their flock. So, where you belong to, the words that are coming, they are supposed to do these things in your life. The words that are coming from the pulpit, if it's a, let, me, let me give you one sign and use that sign to apply to your life. When you stay, you see, when you become planted, you become planted. Every word that is coming, it either comes to correct you, it comes to uh, instruct you, it comes to rebuke you, it comes to conform you to a certain way of thinking. That is discipleship, discipline. Sometimes when you go to school, they'll tell you, what discipline are you, what, what is your discipline? You know, they're talking about the course of study. Because discipline is where you are put on a particular course. You enter the university, you enter the university, you didn't know anything. By seven years, you are, you, you are a doctor. They've made you. They, they have made you. You don't just be giving knowledge. You have been trained. You have been made into something. That is discipline. Seven years. When, when you go to medical school for six years, by the time you come out, you're thinking the way you think. They, they change the way you think. Certain professions, they, they, they change the way you think. There's a way they train them. When you're talking to bankers, there's a way they train them. They train them to think a certain way. I was talking to a friend of mine who is a banker, and he's a risk manager of a bank. Then I was discussing something with him. I said, oh, but you, you, you know that. He said, no. That's how I've been trained to think. I've been trained to see everything as risky until proven otherwise. So even as you were sitting here, you were a risk. <laughs> until you prove to me that you are not a risk. <laughs> that is the benefit of becoming planted. It's, it's discipline. It's a course of study. He said, do not be conformed to the pattern of this world, but be it transformed by the renewing of your mind. It's a course. A course. He said, when we work after the course of the world, after the, 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 the prince of the power of the air, the course, the course of the world, there's a course you are following. So, in that place of planting, your, 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 the way you think the God targets the way you think. Because as you think, so you are. So God targets the way you see things. One thing that, one reason why God puts you under tutors and governors is this. There's one thing that should die in you. It is called haste. 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 You see, because even when you are young, there's something we call gratification, instant gratification. The difference between people who are mature and those who are not is this. People who are mature, they can delay gratification. Number two, they, you see, when you are not mature, number one, you can't delay gratification. Number two, there are two motivating factors, pain and pleasure. 
You see, you you when you see pain, you avoid. Then you 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 tilt towards pleasure as a child. So when children are given medicine, if the medicine is not sweet, they won't take it. Why? Because they are children. So sometimes as an adult, you wonder why the child doesn't want to take the medicine. Because the medicine is supposed to heal the child. But the child will come and then my children when they were younger, they will dip their finger in the medicine and then touch their tongue to determine whether it's sweet or not before they accept it. If it's not sweet, they won't accept it. Sometimes you have to force them. You have to be chasing them around. Just one, just five, five mils, five mils of, of, of medicine, you have to take like one hour. Why? Because the child is motivated by just pain and pleasure. But when you are an adult and you are sick, and they give you injection, they give you medicine, and it's bitter. People take all sorts of bitter things because they know what it's going to do to them. Are you getting me? So one of the things that God wants to die in us is haste. That's why tutors, see, when, when you are under tutors and governors, one thing that you will come to, you will come to a place where you don't have any agenda of your own. For as long as you have an agenda, you will never benefit from tutors and governors. Because the seed must die completely, except a grain of wheat falls to the ground and dies. It abides alone. But if it dies, it brings forth much fruit. So the seed must die. Your vision must die. You, your dreams must die. Your ambitions must die. Then you start flourishing. For as long as you have an ambition, you have a vision, you have a dream. <laughs> so in a work with God, you get to a point where your vision, if your vision doesn't die, you will not see fruitfulness. You will not get to the place where you will flourish like a palm tree. So when God calls you, God Sometimes the reason for the delay, the reason for the stretching is for your vision to die. The very thing that, you see, the very thing you think you have will die. The very Isaac that you think, this is mine. I've struggled to get him. I've struggled for 25 years to get this Isaac. This is my Isaac. I waited patiently for Isaac. I've gotten Isaac. Come and rejoice with me, Isaac. God will say, let that Isaac die. If that Isaac dies, see, God does that to detach you from the Isaac. When that Isaac dies, he will rise again. But in the time of death, it's so painful. That is why I told somebody, you know, he wanted to do certain things. And he said that yeah, and these things, you know, you must keep doing that. I want to do, I want to do again, I want to do it. Then this pastor was telling him, no, no, no. Then he called me and he was talking to me on the phone from another country. I said, listen to your pastor. If you believe that God placed you under him, listen to him. It's simple. If not, then leave him. Then go to a place where you are prepared to die. And prepared to take instructions. Otherwise, leave. It's very simple. It's not everybody who is meant to be everywhere. Are you getting me? It's a, it's, it's a destiny matters. So once you discover your place of planting, then the, the seed must die. Let the seed die. No ambition, no vision. I've come. Mold me, Lord. When you, when you go to the army, they don't want people who are muscular. They want people who are, you know, soft. 
Because they didn't want to mold you into their kind of. That's why when God calls you and you are tough, He will sometimes break you, break you, break you. Oh yes, He will break you till you become you be, you become dust. Then you say, okay, now let me mold you again. <laughs> because He says it's not about your agenda. You have to conform to my agenda. Because I am the one who created you and I am the one who will take you to that place of destiny. You see, if you trust God, that's why I said those who trust God will be planted. Trusting God is like this. Jesus told the disciples, go into the village. When you get there, you will meet a man carrying a pitcher of water. Follow the man. That is a picture of trusting God. So you will meet a man carrying water on his head. Follow him wherever he goes. Don't ask questions. Follow him. So if you are following God and God says, just follow, just follow, come. Then you are going. You get to a point. Okay. Where are we going? Just follow me. Follow me. We are going. You are following God. Then he takes you through a lonely place. Nobody is there. So, ah, but why, why, why are we here? Follow me. So, do you trust me? Do you believe I, I, I'm the Alpha and the Omega? He said, yes. Do you believe that I know the end from the beginning? Yes. Do you believe I know your life's journey? I know where, where it should end. And do you believe that your life is in my hands and I can, I can take care of you? Do you believe that? He said, yes. Then follow me. Then, then, then stop all your questions. Just follow me. Follow me. Sometimes you, you, you tend to ask God, Father, I see the firewood. I see the knife. But where is the lamp? Where is the lamp for the sacrifice? I know we are journeying to the top of the mountain and we are supposed to sacrifice on top of the mountain. But where is the lamp? You know what God will tell you? You are the lamp. Any further questions? <laughs> you want to be a lamp? You want to be a lamp? You are the lamp. You are the one I'm going to sacrifice on the mountain. Any questions again? End of questions. Our work with God is always full of questions because we as humans, sometimes we fall short. Sometimes we cannot trust God totally. But God says, if you trust me with all your heart, and you know that I know the way. And you follow me and live your life in my hand. So I will take you to the desire. I know the thoughts I think towards you. To bring you to an expected end. If you put your life in God's hand, you are planted firmly. Nothing will move you. Then, you know, after that, the, the next one was the lack of depth, shallowness, lack of, lack of depth. Do you know that those who are planted, they are deep. Even there's a saying that there's a saying in a can. so far any trail rule. Yes, it's true. A rolling stone gathers no moss. When you are planted, you'll be deep. Because your eye is single. Your eye is single. You see, when you have ambition, ambition, um, you see, it's God who gives vision. God gives vision. Listen. God gives vision, then God gives supervision. When, when vision comes, He puts the vision in your heart. Then He puts a supervision on you so that your vision will, will live to its end. That's why we need supervision. Now, the devil comes with die vision. Double vision, 
division, division. So when God gives you the vision and he places you under supervision, God gives you provision. God gives you provision. Huh. But when there is no planting, there's, there's lack of depth. Lack of depth. So when the vision is under supervision, the roots are planted, developed. Until the time appointed by the Father. But you see provision. Otherwise, division will come. You see, division will come to scatter the vision. Because the vision is not planted. It's just by the wayside. So division will come to devour the seeds. The seed will not be planted. Then the next thing, from those three scriptures... Concerning the problem of the sewer, that accounted for the seed not growing was the desire for other things. The desire for other things. The desire for other things. You see, when you are planted and you get to a place of maturity, you get to a place of one thing. One thing. Before God can work with us, even as a group, we must all come to a place of one thing. On the day of Pentecost, when they were at one place, with one accord, the Holy Spirit came. There was a mighty, sound of a mighty rushing wind, which filled the entire house. And they began to speak with other tongues. As the Spirit gave them utterance, it was a place of one thing. Jesus said, one thing is needful. He said, one thing you lack. Paul said, one thing I do. That's the place of maturity. One thing. One thing. You live for just one thing. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You know, so whenever we are planted, we are focused. Distractions are eliminated. Therefore, growth comes. Flourishing comes. That's why it's good to be planted, to be firm. If you decide to live your life based on what people say, (laughs) rather than what the word says, But when you are planted in the Word, you become solid. You you see, it's not about this one is saying this. This one is saying this. No. What is the Word saying? What is the Word saying? That's why today, many Christians, they live their lives on the current Directions. Current directions. The latest prophetic direction. Latest aquanture in town. So tomorrow, another aquanture will come. And they they will carry out that aquanture. Then next day, another one will come. So every day, they are living by what is the latest bath with salt, bath with this, drink this, do this. No, you see, your life must be connected to something that is more permanent. There should be a changeless core on your inside. Otherwise, you'll be carried away by the constant change around you. If there's no changeless core, you see, that because things are changing around us. If we are to be following opinions, we'll be doing different things every day. If we are to be following people's ideas, we'll be changing things, doing things every day. 
But there must be something you are connected to that you are convinced. The word. I don't know why nobody has come out with a direction with fire. No, because, because now they are using all sorts of things for direction. Why, why don't they use fire to bring fire? When you are coming, put it on your head. Because on the day of Pentecost, fire was on their heads. Then they, they, that's when I will believe that direction, I, I will believe it. <laughs> that one, I will believe it. But I will wait when I see people have done it. And, you know, then I will believe that, oh, this, this, the, this is a good direction. Then the last one is the case of this world. Now, let me end. When you are planted and you are growing, you see, every tree has a gestation period. Or, you see, not all trees grow at the same time. That's why we are different. The, you see, the b- believer, we are this, we are all believers, but everybody has a different gestation period, a different time zone, a different, you know, like a period, period where you will grow for your the tree to become relevant. You don't have to compare trees. There are, there are some trees, there's a tree called bam, Chinese bamboo. Chinese bamboo. It for when you when you when, when when you plant it, for the first five years, there's nothing growing. For the first five years, nothing is growing. So it it will look as if the tree has died. But it grows downwards for the first five years. After five years, it grows five feet in five weeks. After five years, it grows five feet in five weeks. But for the first five years, nothing is growing. And when you know the kind of tree, you see, there are some trees, you plant them today, within a short time they grow. Some of them, they even start bearing fruit. If you are a cedar, if you are a cedar, you will know that your manifestation will take time. Because you are a cedar of Lebanon. It will take time. Because God will first work on your roots. For your roots to go down and down and down and down. But when you grow, you are stable and solid. And nothing, not, no, no wind can bring you down. Nothing can bring you down. So, you can decide that you are going to be planted. You are going to grow. You are going to develop roots. So that when the day comes, and you shoot up. It's like, you know, it, 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 it will be like you have been around all this world. When I say developing roots, I'm not saying you have to shut yourself in a room for five years. No. I'm saying for five years, all you have to see, it, it's all about obeying God. For that period of five years, nothing will be showing, nothing will be showing about your life. You know, despite all the things you carry on your head, the big, big, big prophecies, the big, big, big dreams you carry, nothing will be showing. But after the five years, you see the bamboo, the Chinese bamboo, springing up. Then, just springs up like that, shoots up like that. Yes. That is how the right see he said the righteous will flourish like a palm tree, but you will grow like the cedar. So God is more interested in the roots 
that the fruit, the root first, the root must go down. You see, when the root goes down, sometimes I ask myself, isn't God, isn't God concerned about what is going on in the system? One day I was asked, I said, why is it that there are many people who are false prophets leading many people out, I mean, astray and, and, and God is not raising genuine people? Because that the, the world is not my problem. The church is my problem. Say, the church. Say, I will build my church. So he's seriously building. When, when the building is unveiled, you see, it, 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 it doesn't take God much or few to save. A nation can be born in a day. Yes. Listen, don't you see, God, God has power over time. So it's better to go through God's process. Listen, like, uh, you know, uh, what is this word? You know when he became uh, born again? I mean, when he, he started ministry. Age 57. 57. And he died at 87. 30 years. Those 30 years. People's 50 years. Don't come close. People's 60 years. Don't come close. That was his gestation period. So, what is your gestation period? Maybe the reason why you are seeing people who started with you, like I'm talking about in terms of started with you, in terms of they all became born again at, at the same time, and you see that they are up, it's like, it looks like they are, they are, they are, they are, they are, they are the trees have shot up and they, they are bearing fruit, and you, you don't see any fruit. You Don't worry. Once I had a dream, and the Lord used a dream to explain many things to me. In a dream, it was like we had to go through a tunnel. So you will go through it, then they will work on you, they will pour some liquids, work on you, then you will come out. So somebody went through, and this person is somebody that I will consider like a son. You know, I will consider him like a son because, in terms of, you know, um, Christian maturity is like I, I'm ahead of him by God's grace. So he went through the thing, and I was waiting to go. Through, so he went through. When he went through, he just went through. Then he came out, and he was just greeting people and telling them about, about what he went through. So it was my turn to go through. So I I also lie down, and I went through. When I got to the middle, the thing stopped. Then the, the man said, bring more chemicals. You have to pour more chemicals. And they were pouring chemicals and doing all, it was like a machine. And I was asking myself, why is it that this person has just been through the thing and come out and I'm still caught, I'm still caught in, in, in this. So finally, I came out of the machine. When I came, I met one senior of mine. You know what he said? He said that it depends on the course you are doing. He said there are some courses they are short. There are other courses, they are long. Maybe the course you are doing is architecture <laughs> or medicine. <laughs> so you, you are going to be in it for a long time. So, you see, if somebody does, let's say, economics, like I did economics, three years, I was out. Even now, they use four years, right? I, I, I was out three years. Some of my mates who were doing medicine, when we were, some of them, when we were getting married, they were complete, about to complete medical school. When we had completed and we were settling down. You know, but you see, it's, it's because of the path that they chose. It's because of the path. So if you want, if you think that we all entered the university at the same time, so why is it that you have completed? I, mean, I, I will understand. I'm joining you. You abandon your process. You, you, can't, you can't join him. You, you, the certificate that you have, it cannot get you a job. Are you getting me? You can't, you can't, what, what job are you going to get with um, third year human biology? Third year human biology. 
What are you what are you going to do? Are you a doctor or you are what semi doctor or and if you go to the village, maybe they will call you doctor, but you will kill people. So the one who went for three years, he has come out. That was his course for three years, and he has come out. Maybe you, your course is 10 years. But it's for your good. Because when you come out, the kind of people that you are working on, he's, maybe he is working on uh, you know, economics, working on uh, uh, demand and supply. and all. Some, some people are even used working on machines. But he is going to work on a human being. So it takes him six years. Six years to learn how to work on human beings. Sometimes they even do further studies. Further studies. <laughs> you know, like my wife's sister is a medical doctor. And she was telling me that there was a point where the children in the neighborhood, they were saying that, Sister Edward, I'm born by you. <laughs> Because, because she was always going to school. Meanwhile, her colleagues, you know, they would just finish and come around. And she's always, like, every time she's studying. So the children thought that maybe it's because, that she, it's because she's, she's, she's dumb. So when, you see, when people who think like that, they are children. Who compare oranges and mangoes. They are children. Compare banana and orange and say, which one is bigger? Your cost of study is different from somebody's cost of study. But at the end of the day, the day, the tree, the day that you will finish, you will go through and you will finish. That day, you become relevant in a unique way. In a way that nobody see, because it is, it is unique. Never, never Never think that anything that God puts you on or through will be a waste. It won't be a waste. In fact, including the mistakes you commit, they will not be a waste. Including your disobedience, including, including the detours you make on your part of destiny, everything will be worked together. God will just weave everything together. Sometimes the greatest glories are after the greatest failures. Let's be on our feet. You see, I want I want to encourage you this morning that on the path of destiny, all that we have to do is to trust God. Sometimes you can't see your way clearly, but trust Him. You don't know what is coming, but trust him. You don't know what is against you, but trust him. He said, if, if I am for you, what is against you is irrelevant. He said, if God is for us, who, 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 who? If he is for me, who or uh, what is against me is irrelevant. Let's pray for the grace of God. That his grace will sustain us. His grace will encourage us. His grace will lift us up. His grace will speak to us. Open your mouth and pray. His grace will speak to us. His grace will keep us. Sustain us. Preserve us. In the name of Jesus. Makia la masi korobo shitaha, kobra hata la baki zoto lobo shata, makali anterebe kusata ha, librande te kuto tos, inya te ni hoto lobo, rite te shiki rite te sa, kama te libre te lobo shi, mo kuto tos, ika tana mwezi, mo ni kuto tos, makere be to sata ha, mo zero be hoto na mwezi. In the name of Jesus, your grace, O God, your grace to sustain, your grace to encourage, your grace to lift us up, your grace to sustain us, O God, your grace to strengthen us, 
Your grace to teach us, O oh God. Your grace to enable us to stand. Your grace, O oh God. Your grace to put us firmly on the path of destiny. Your grace not to fall aside. Your grace not to turn aside from following you. Your grace to be focused. Your grace to be persistent. Your grace for tenacity. Your grace for resilience. The grace to keep on, to stick to it, stick to it. Grace to endure, grace to go through, grace to endure barren moments, barren moments. Grace to go through pain, go through darkness, dark moments, go through pillars of silence of God. When God is silent, when you are silent, give me grace to keep trusting, to keep believing you. Even when you are silent, Give me grace to follow you. Even when I don't see anything, when there's no end in sight, give me the grace, the grace to continue to believe, the grace to hold on to you, the grace not to give up, the grace to believe, the grace to keep on believing, the grace to keep on believing, the grace to hold on, the grace to hold on, the grace to hold on. Endure silent moments, the silent moments, the grace to endure your silent moments. When you are silent, when you are silent, when I don't hear from you, give me the grace, the grace to remain focused, the grace to keep believing, the grace to remain calm, the grace to remain calm, 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 the grace, the grace to understand. The grace to understand. Yes, Lord. Glory at the Nebuchadnezzar. We can't attain. Makiria Talamahosa. Oro no Sikahosa. Rinene Sikonomahata. Mandere de Kesikaha. Mori and Terebehosa. Motilia Tete. Mori at the Nebu. Ikaria Terebeshikaha. In the name of Jesus. We are praying this prayer. Sometimes when God is silent, when God is silent, we become jittery. We start panicking. Fear sets in. Anxiety sets in. We think we have come to a dead end. We think God has abandoned us. We are praying that God should give us the grace. The grace to endure silent moments. Moments where we don't say anything, hear anything. Grace to just hold on. Grace to just keep on. Just keep on keeping on. Grace to say, though I don't see, I don't hear, but I trust him. I trust him. I don't understand. It doesn't make sense. It doesn't add up. But I trust him. If he said it, he would do it. And I believe it. It's subtle. He said it. I believe it. I don't know how he's going to do it, but I believe it. I don't know how, but I believe. I know he will do it, for his word is true, for he watches over his word to perform it. He that has spoken will also bring it to pass. He will surely bring it to pass. Surely bring it to pass. In the name of Jesus. Grace, 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 We are praying this last prayer. We are praying for the nation called Ghana. We are asking for God's grace. God's mercy on Ghana. What God has said concerning this nation, it will come to pass. It will come to pass. The path that God has put us on, it will come to pass. We are silencing the voice of the devil that is speaking curse over this nation, that is speaking failure over this nation. In the name of Jesus, Ghana will not die. Ghana will live. In the name of Jesus, the destiny of Ghana is intact. In the name of Jesus, the destiny of the nation 
is in the hands of God. Our destiny is not in the hands of politicians. It's in the hands of God. God is the one who called Ghana as the firstborn of Africa. And Ghana will fulfill purpose. In the name of Jesus, Ghana will fulfill purpose. We come against the voice of the enemy. The voice of the enemy speaking into this nation. Speaking to the soul of this nation. We disconnect the soul of this nation from negative voices. In the name of Jesus, we connect the soul of this nation to the counsel of God. In the name of Jesus, Ghana will obey the counsel of God. In the name of Jesus, we will not walk on the way of sinners, nor stand in the seat on the seat of the scornful. But Ghana will be planted and will flourish, will flourish, will flourish. Prosperity will come to Ghana. In the name of Jesus, prosperity will come to Ghana. In the name of Jesus. Ghana will prosper. Ghana will prosper. Revival is coming to Ghana. In the name of Jesus, spiritual revival is coming to Ghana. God is doing something for this nation called Ghana. Because revival is bringing up from this nation to around the world. In the name of Jesus. We pray for our leaders. Give them wisdom, O God. We pray for our president. Give him wisdom. Give him wisdom. Give him boldness. Give him wisdom. Any good thing, any good plan, any good plan that he has for this nation, let him see the light of day. In the name of Jesus, breathe on every good plan. In the name of Jesus, any evil plan that will come into their heads, let those evil plans perish in their heads. In the name of Jesus, we kill every evil plan in Jesus' name. Let the good plans, God breathe on the good plan. In the name of Jesus, Korea Talabaha, Ritanabaha City, Matolobokota, Ritanabahasa, Mantelemiko Sitaha, Rapatan, Moria Turu, Ramatanamaha Sata, in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. We give you praise. We thank you, Lord. We know God that you declare the end from the beginning. We know that you don't change. Therefore, we are not concerned. We know the thoughts you think towards us. Therefore, we can trust in you. We choose to put our trust in you, God. We choose not to focus on what, the, what is changing around us, not to focus on what the devil is saying, but we choose to place our lives in your hand. For we know that you can keep us. You can keep us by your power. We know you can sustain us. We know you can help us. We choose to trust you. In the name of Jesus, we ask for grace, O oh God, for the barren moments. Grace for the silent moments. Grace for the lonely moments, O oh God. Release grace for when the time that we are going through loneliness. Time that we're going through periods of darkness, periods of misunderstanding, release your grace. That even when we don't see clearly, we can trust you. Even when we don't see clearly, when there's no end in sight, we can still trust you. And we can still say, we don't know what the future holds up, but we know the world of the future. We give you praise and we thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. Let's be seated.